flight path isn't everyone's idea of fun, unless, of course, your sound artist Lawrence English. It was writer philosopher Alain de Poton who coined the term the art of travel, but Lawrence is taking that concept one step further. This is a story for which Fenella Kernebone had to catch a plane or two. aircraft noise, planes flying overhead, taking off or landing is not normally considered to be a thing of beauty. When you're trying to sleep and all you can hear is planes and that can be rather disruptive. Well, people don't have a soft spot for airports. But there are exceptions. Some people love planes and puns, like jetrosexuals. Basically we're referring to anyone who is an aircraft lover who are otherwise more commonly known as a plane spotter or a jet spotter. Others get creative, proving one person's noise is another person's so art. A, it's an NT4, a roadie microphone. In our everyday lives, we're so used to industrial sound, whether it be planes or traffic or the sound of the photocopier in an office, you know, you tend to block that stuff out. Uh, but with this project, you know, it's about actually opening up the ears. So, I'll set him up there. So Brisbane sound nice. artist Lawrence English has a soft spot for the sounds associated with airports and plane travel, which is why he's developed the Airport Symphony as part of the Queensland Music Festival. Do you want me to start with Lawrence? Yeah? Lawrence has spent the last few months clearing security at Brisbane Airport to make field recordings, and he's invited sound artists from all over the world to reinterpret them. So this is where you always come to? Yeah, it is where we always come to. There's two ends of the tarmac, this one and the other one, and today we're getting the takeoffs down here and the landings at the other end. So, you know, there's something about the majesty of flight, never wears thin. <laughs> Great. Do you want me to carry something? Sure, there you go. Thank you. Thanks. When you do start listening, you realise that these planes has this beautiful kind of richness, textural quality and a kind of tonal quality. And for this particular Dash 8 plane we're going to watch uh, take off now, this wonderful kind of droning, prop-like kind of feeling, it's just fantastic. This kind of beautiful kind of overtone coming out of the engine and I guess w what I'm hoping to do with the project is commissioning artists to make works from these sort of source recordings is that when they sit down in their studios and they start manipulating the sounds they start to find all these sort of hidden qualities. So it's this almost meditation on, on not just the physicality of the airport but also a meditation on the idea of travel, the idea of, of um, transit bodies in motion. We, we can stand here right now, watch this absolutely enormous plane take off. <laughs> Whenever I do an interview, usually the sound recorder basically says, stop, stop, you know, we've got to wait till the plane goes over. So Warwick, sorry to put you on the spot here, but uh, what do you feel about plane noise? You're a sound recorder. I love plane noises. <laughs> That's because you're a, you're a plane lover, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, actually aerosexual. <laughs> aerosexual? Yeah, wow. Yeah, I think you've coined yeah. a new term. Yeah, well, jets, pistons, propellers, all that sort of stuff. The Airport Symphony is a public call for works, as well as a series of commissions featuring some of the world's leading sound artists. I think it's very individual the way that people are kind of coming at this project. Some people, uh, for instance, I just got a piece from a Canadian musician called Tim Hecker, and his piece is this enormous textural drone over about eight minutes. And whereas someone like Richard Chartiera, another musician from Washington, has gone for the complete opposite. Not a huge fan of flying, so Richard's made this very kind of textural piece which kind of explores that kind of environment of how you try and block out the sounds of travel when you are in that state of travel. So how does an experimental music project fit in with the Queensland Music Festival? We try to see music as part of everybody's day's lives and how it's interpreted is up to the individual and the music festival incorporates the diversity. It has classical music which is traditionally high art um, but I think we've tried to see it as one, just music, we're not differentiating. It's about introducing new experiences into people's lives and new sounds. Brisbane sound artist Joel Stern has created a work from Lawrence's field recordings. I started to think about all the time I've spent in airport terminals, 10 hour stopovers sitting on hard plastic chairs. So I made a piece called Terminal Dreaming, which is all about uh, that weird kind of nowhere uh, headspace that you get into when you're waiting. There's nothing new about recording the sounds of the environment for musical sound art. 
American composer Steve Reich's cut-up masterpiece Different Trains for string quartet and tape is renowned, while ambient maestro Brian Eno is an obvious reference, especially music for airports, designed to help you relax in a manic place. Hopefully there'll be a quality of that to there, there'll be some introspection, people can put it on, but if they've never kind of travelled or anything, it'll give them some indication of what those experiences for different people might be. If you look at the whole history of sound art, I think a lot of people have been inspired directly by um, the environment around them. So even though a project may um, have its origin, you know, on the internet or with file sharing, inevitably it draws heavily from the real world as well. But what about that term, jetrosexual? I think people assume I am. Uh, I'm not sure. I have to admit, I've definitely grown much fonder of planes since I've been out here. There's something about just being able to reach up and nearly being hit by a plane. It's just very exciting. What an amazing concept for a project. Who would the audience be for it, though, do you think? <laughs> uh, I think it's me, actually. <laughs> to be honest, I love sound art. I love experimental music, Michael. But it, it's not for everybody. I, I don't know how many people really would want to sit there and listen to, you know, reinterpretations of a plane flying or, or the terminal, for example. You know, the aeroplane terminal. But I know I would. But, you know, it's, it's not traditional music. I mean, some of this stuff is like a wall of sound. It's just a cacophony. And sometimes it could be the most beautiful ambient music you could ever imagine. They might have reinterpreted it with, a, you know, with rainforest sounds or, or something like that so it's, it's a real range of noise or music that people could make but the audience people who like sound art and experimental music and guilty as charged that's me and it's not the first time a composer has taken the aesthetics of modern life and put it to music um, Steve Reich and uh, also John Cage and Philip Glass have, have yeah. well that's, that's the beauty of music concrete Michael that whole kind of electronic age that came through where people suddenly could make music not just with instruments but with using quarter inch tape so you could record the sounds of stuff cut it, cut it together go out and do field recordings and it's this totally new style of music and I, I love this stuff in fact if you're interested in that there's this festival that's on at the moment it's just finished up in Sydney and it's going to Brisbane and Melbourne next and it's called Liquid Architecture and it's a festival that explores all of Australia's and international sound art kind of the best folk who explore this sorts of music in in the country and internationally as well so I'm a nerd for this stuff Michael I can't get enough geek please <laughs> geek not nerd a geek yeah true a sound art geek oh, I don't know I'm never going to get any friends <laughs> Next week, you might have some friends, but what have, what have you got for us on Sunday yeah, Well, next week I'm making friends with some public art, so we're going in search of where public art in Australia is at at the moment. You've got lots of friends here, Fenella. We look forward to it. Thank you. And if planes aren't your thing, but you'd like to know some more about some of the other events at the Queensland Festival of Music, just go to our website, abc.net.au slash sundayarts. And of course, there's plenty more going on around the country. To find out what and where, just click on our art map.